Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the weekly contest for three maximize total cost of alternating subway ways. Uh, yeah. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. This one, I, uh, I, I took 10 minutes and a wrong answer. I think I was trying too hard to prematurely optimize, but, um, but really this should be a more, st um, I should have done better on this one, is what I'm trying to say. But in any case, this is, um, I would say the solution and the problem is kind of standard E, but it is something that probably requires a little bit of practice and understanding. So I think that is something that is, um, yeah, just a tricky problem. So, so don't feel too bad if you took a while to get. I mean, so there are a couple of components about this. One is that one observation is that you can divide it into as many subways as you want. So that means that in a way, um, you can. Just keep on adding all the numbers, right? So, for example, you can add 1 plus negative 2 plus 3 plus 4 because you can just have, like, you know, if you have a, 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 if you have an array of a length n, you can have n components. So then, okay, so that's like a, a base case, say. So how do you do better? So the idea here is that um, in this, you can have a negative component. So, in, if, for example, 1, you could kind of see that, right? You could you want to um, get rid of the negative two by putting them in one component, and you could even put three in the same component. But a key observation to kind of simplify the problem is that this function is uh, combined with the idea that you could divide into as many components as you want. Means that the um, means that let me put it in the ASCII notes section means that uh, because of this function, you can always divide, uh, you can always subdivide as many times as you want. So the only thing that matters is that you have this thing. So you could, because you can always divide the rest as, um, if you have something like this, uh, plus num sub L plus two, uh, and then it's gonna be minus num sub L plus three, right? So you can always subdivide this into two different components because you can just take this off and then put this in a new component. Oops. And it would give you the same answer, right? So that's basically the, the key part about this idea. And because of that, then now you have basically a decision to make um, for dynamic programming as it happens. But it is that you can either take, for each index, you can either, um, take this or this, right? Um, because basically you have two things and then after that you start a new component. And because these are the two, you can think of them as like Legos or building blocks that you can build everything else out of, right? And so then this problem becomes b taking these components and and building um, the solution out, uh, the best solution of the entire way out of them. So you either you take one or two. And so this, I think, is a good, and if you struggle up to this point and you haven't made this observation, I do urge that if you're practicing at home, pause the video and then see if you could solve the rest because um, I think the rest you should be able to do with dynamic programming. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to pause for a little bit of a three-second dance. One, two, three, do, 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 right? Okay, so now let's say you have this, and another way to think about this then now is that instead of, uh, let's just call them I because, you know, L is a little bit awkward looking. But let's just say that we revert this a little bit. Let's say we're at I, then we'll add numbers I. Then the two things that we can do about this number, right, is that we can either, um, it's just start its own subsequence or subarray, sorry. So we can start its own subarray or we can add it to a previous subarray, so something like this, right? And of course, there are conditions here. Some of them is obvious. Uh, one of them is that, uh, well, let's just say this is plus, or make it clear that this is plus. One of them is that, of course, I cannot be zero because then now you go out of bounds, right? Reasonable. But the other thing is that um, if you if you want to add here, oh, sorry, if you want to subtract here, the last, you you have to add this number, right? Um, and and yeah, so that means that if um, in the next number, let's say you know in, in the future you have num sub i 
plus one, you cannot do it. So you cannot, you know, you have to be a little bit careful so that you don't do this operation, right? Um, but once you m maintain it, then you realize that, well, there are only two, two possible states for each i. One is that ends in a plus and ends in a minus. And then now you can kind of um, figure out the transitions for dynamic programming, because then now let's say you have num sub i plus one, um, then now, if you want to do the add operation, what does that look like? Well, the add operation, you can add it to here and you can add it to here. So that's fine, right? To either. But then if you want to do a subtract operation, you can only add to the positive one, right? Um, because then now you can add it to here and extend that one with a negative. So, and then you kind of just keep track of all these things. So that's basically the idea of the transition. And now uh, I'll just show you how I implemented it with this one, right? So here um, I, I have two indexes and um, yeah. So DP of I of, I don't know, J, I guess, is uh, equal to um, the best solution up, uh, including num sub I, right, where if j is equal to zero, it, the, the last number added is positive. Pause. Or the last number is added, actually. That, that, the, the, way I phrased, the way I phrased that is wrong, actually, before. Uh, the last number is subtracted, right? Cannot type. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. I think this, does, this is doesn't need to be a max, I think, because this is always, I, I never update it, except for here, right? Um, so yeah, so then now we set up the base case, which is that we just set it to zero, nothing too crazy about that. Uh, keeping in mind that um, zero of one, which is the last time we subtracted, would still remain negative infinity, because we just can't do it. Um, yeah, and then here, the first number, um, yeah, I don't think I needed to special case this, but maybe I do. I think I do for the negative side. That's why. Um, that's why I kind of wrote it as a base case. But yeah, and this is just starting off the first number. The first number you always have to add just the way it is, right? You can think about it a little bit. And then... Um, uh, and then, yeah. And then this is just what we talked about. Um, the new positive case, if we try to add a positive, we can add it to either. So this is going to be either, you know, the last number, uh, the positive version or the negative version plus the current number. And then here's for subtracting and you can only do it if the last number was positive. So you have that. And then now we just return the last element, which includes everything. Uh, and this is um, the way that I wrote this is just so that it has zero and one. So it, it takes the max of whether the last number is added or subtracted. Um, of course, the way that I did this is going to be linear time, linear space, right? You see the linear space here. This is the linear time. Also, technically, it's linear time here, too, because, you know, you have to allocate the space. But if you, if you have, a, uh, if you observed it, you know, you make a, uh, yeah, if you can't pay attention, then you also notice that you can actually reduce the space of space optimization because you only update or you only need the previous i. Right, so yeah, so you can actually use the space optimization to optimize this to uh, constant space, and yeah, I'll leave that for uh, you know as the textbook would say, uh, leave that as an exercise for people at home. But yeah, uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and yeah, you can watch me solve it live in the contest now. And one, all right, let's YOLO. Okay. Actually, I should have double checked the grid. I, I, as I submitted and took a little bit long time, I was like, oh, wait, did I do it too slowly? <laughs> like, did I do a thing? Did people do this one? I don't know. Okay, let's just do this one first. I think it's a different poem anyway. Uh, okay. What, what is this? Okay, yeah, alternating. Okay, fine. The total. Uh, okay, n is 10 to the fifth, so we have to be a little bit. So it's not DP, or it's not in that way. Um, so the first one is always a plus. The total cost of the subway. Okay. Oh, we have to be. Let's 
So, okay. This one seems like a straightforward one. I don't know why no one's gotten it yet. Uh, maybe I'm just messing around really quickly. Uh, there's no K or anything, so it's just some sort of greedy. Um, okay, so then here. So the problem is negative values in a row, right? So here we can just... Hmm, maybe it is DP. Um, because basically, you either choose one or two elements. Right? So, okay. Maybe there is DP out as well. There's nothing like crazy DP, but... Um, also, it could be negative, so maybe this is just negative. Infinity. Right, and maybe DP of So then you either start So basically what am I saying exactly, right? So Okay, people finally got it. Okay. So dp sub i is equal to or dp plus one. So this is equal to either so we what am I doing? So dp of i minus one. So that's good. <clears throat> I'm not being precise on this. Okay. So basically, okay. Maybe I have to do it the other way. Mm, I'm just being very really lazy on this one. Uh, come on, focus, focus. Okay, so zero, and then now we have either two, we have one, or we have two. Okay, so we have two, then it is just that number minus num sub i minus one the indexing is very tricky plus num sub i right so it's max of this or dp of i plus num sub i something like this basically you're saying okay assuming that and then to do is that right this isn't quite right Why am I struggling? I know how I want to do it, but it's, I'm just struggling today. Uh, struggle bus. No, it's this. No, you want it so that it is plus num sub i. No, this is probably right, but, but it just doesn't work with zero. I think that's why my I'm struggling a little bit. Okay, zero, right? And then dp sub one is equal to num sub zero. You have to start it off. So then now we start with two, or, well, one, <coughs> which is that basically either start a new one right so if i minus one is even and it will always be so dp sub i plus one is equal to dp of i plus num sub i or if i minus two is greater than or equal to zero then dp sub i plus 1 is equal to dp of i minus 1 minus num sub i minus 1 plus num sub i or well, well, max of this and just return the last chunk 
tens. Uh, okay, I mean, we have some answer. It's not the right answer, but it is some answer. Uh, this is going to be four. How, I get two. Why? Uh, just spending too much time on this one, struggling. Okay, so see what's right. This is one. Um, here. Hmm. Here should be actually. Um, so on one element, we actually want this to be. Okay, so this is starting a new one, so, and this is actually based off. This is. The previous element is throwing a new one. Maybe this is a little bit off. This should be dp of i. Minus num sub i. If. Is this right? 10402. It just looks so weird, that's why I feel a little bit awkward about it, but I think this is right. Uh, eh, is 10 to 20 enough? Yeah, let's say, okay. <laughs> I don't know, YOLO. Oof! Huh, I thought we were trying to maximize. Uh, I guess that's probably not maximized. Hmm. Uh, this was a case that I was thinking about, so I definitely a little bit sloppy. Uh, so okay, negative fourteen, negative thirteen is going to be this plus. So this is negative one is correct, and then negative twenty is oh this is negative. That's why I am just being sloppy. I should have done this, but I wasn't sure that I needed to. That's why. Um, okay, but I, I, try, I try to be too clever with an optimization, but instead I messed up. So it's do 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 right. Um, so then now here is an ending in zero and positive. This is ending in negative, but then now ending in positive. It could the previous could be that, or it could be just ending in negative, and that's fine. So actually, maybe something like this. But then here, if it's negative, then it has to be just a positive. Oops. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess this is... Yeah, okay. And then now this is max of this, right? Um, hmm. What? Where am I? Uh, number 11. I plus 1 is right, right? Oh, 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 I have it on the other direction. Okay, fine. I am new. Okay, 10, 4, 2, negative 2, okay. I don't know why I struggled. I knew how to do that one. Why, Larry? Why did you waste time on a silly... Like, I don't know why I did that optim... I tried to do that optimization. I'm just kind of so off. I knew that I... That was so... Ugh. Ugh. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem, the explanation, this contest, everything in between. Stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. Stay cool, because it's really hot in here in New York. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.